Hey guys, this is The Wiggle Man and welcome back to Wiggle's Miniature Workshop, where today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be cleaning my airbrush. So if you've watched my uh, Villainy Inks review video that we did a couple of days ago, uh, I was very, very positive on the product. Uh, one thing that I noticed was that it wasn't going through my airbrush too well during the review process. So my suspicion is that it's just because I haven't cleaned my airbrush in a very, very long time. Uh, however, again, we've got some great results, great looking results while you clean your airbrush. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get stuck in. It's going to be a bit of a one take handy job from me today as I'm doing it directly from the miniature workshop. So what you're going to need is, of course, your airbrush. We've got this tool here, which is a nozzle cleaner. Uh, it simply just unscrews like that and it is a very, very fine pointed pin, essentially. And that's for cleaning out the nozzle, the finest point of the airbrush. And then we've got these two kind of pipe cleaner looking doohickeys right here. Uh, these are all available on Amazon, very, very cheap. A um, couple of quid at best. Uh, and these will be for kind of cleaning out the body of the airbrush. So to begin, we first off by disassembling our airbrush. This isn't any particular branded airbrush. Um, again, I've said previously on the channel, I'm a, a bit of a, a bit of a tight ass, quite frankly. Um, and I go for the cheap things. I'm a big believer in there's no point in investing in a big expensive airbrush when you can destroy a very, very cheap uh, airbrush. This one cost me about £20, I think, again, off Amazon. But yeah, so we're going to disassemble it like so. And I think it's very important. Keep yourself some kind of receptacle device for your airbrush parts, uh, just so it's all kept in the same place. You can see there... We've got a lot of paint build up on that, on the needle. But yes, it's important to keep a something just to keep all your bits in so you don't lose any of it, because that can be very, very frustrating, especially when we get down to how tiny the nozzle is. Let's zoom in on that. So we're going to take our little kind of uh, our chuck, and we're gonna, just going to gently take the nozzle off find a couple of turns and then you can do the rest with your fingers because then you manage to keep a grip onto the nozzle at the same time once again we're going to put that in our little pot there so for the actual cleaning of the airbrush all we do is we zoom back out Whoop. Is that we take our pipe cleaner kind of thing, our metal pipe cleaner. I like to use the metal one. I don't necessarily rate these ones with the bristles on because I've noticed that the bristles fall off very easily. And then we just push it in. See, there's quite a lot of resistance pushing it in there. And that's pretty much perfectly sized to the tube here, which is where I find a lot of paint buildup happens. And then we just... Just push it in and out, give it a clean. Because it's kind of riveted, it's kind of a corkscrew kind of a thing on, on, on these, it will get any excess paint off the walls of your uh, airbrush. And then we're going to go to the bigger size. Once again, push that in. It's a bit tighter this time, but it still goes in. So that says to me that there's still a paint build up in there. And you can see through there that we've gotten all the way through. We're just effectively cleaning out the canal where the paint runs through to get to the nozzle. So next we clean the needle, which this is something I do regularly. So this, I haven't done this in about six months. So there's been quite a lot of build up in there. Not something that I do fairly often. This, I usually kind of clean after every every couple of airbrush sessions. Um, I don't lubricate it, however. Uh, it is advised to lubricate it, um, but I don't lubricate, lubricate this. Uh, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the edge of my little tool here and I'm just going to scrape off the paint. I 
I'm pretty sure this isn't the scientific method of doing it. This isn't the way that um, I'm sure professional airbrush users would look at this and scream in anger and frustration. This is Wiggles Miniature Workshop's patented half ass technique. <laughs> and you nearly stab yourself in the finger while you're doing it. What we're also going to do today, we're going to test the villainy ink through the airbrush once more. I believe this is a 0.3 millimeter nozzle that we're using at the moment. I've actually got a 0.5 millimeter nozzle lined up here. Uh, because if you look very closely, let's once again zoom in there. Is it going to focus? We do have a bent needle. Um, that is from me using it without the cap because I'm a naughty boy. Um, however, it's not caused me any issues whilst painting. So it's not the perfect clean on the needle, but that should do for now. So next we're going to clean the nozzle. So we take our nozzle out of the pot. Again, be very, very careful with it at this stage because it is by far the easiest piece to lose. So we're going to take our nozzle cleaning device. As you can see here, it's got a flat edge on it and we're going to insert it into the nozzle here, like so, and we're just gonna kinda gently push down on the nozzle whilst twisting our nozzle cleaning device at the same time. And that will let it pick up, kinda, it effectively scrapes the walls of the nozzle for you. I also insert it into the top just to get rid of any top blockages. You can see right there, we've got a little bit of paint on the end. Again, it's just little amounts of paint like this that can actually interrupt kind of the airflow of your airbrush. So that's had a good scrape. So let's get it all back together and give it a test. So starting with the nozzle first, we plop it onto the airbrush. And we very, very carefully, there we go. So again, the nozzle is the easiest part of the airbrush to damage because it's got so tight thread, like so minimal and fragile threads. What you want to do when you're apply, uh, reapplying the nozzle is to ever so gently, you just want to gently twist with your screw and you want to put a minimal amount of force on it. You effectively want to just use no effort whatsoever. And as soon as you feel resistance, so I feel resistance now, I'm going to stop screwing that back on. That'll avoid damaging the threads or anything like that. I'm going to reinsert the needle. We're also going to zoom out. So with our bent ass needle reinserted, I'm going to put the chuck and the cap back on. We're going to check that the action, that's fine by me. So we're going to reattach it. So we've reattached it to the air hose, the air supply. I'm going to put the back bit back on. We're going to give it a test. So first off, when I do kind of a, when I've cleaned my airbrush and I do a test, I like to do it with a bit of water and just kind of see if the airflow is good going through it. So we're going to put a little bit of water into our cup and we're just going to spray it. That seems suitable. So next we are going to go to our Villainy Ink, our Ecor of the Damned. So we're going to shake, shake, shake it up. We're going to put a little bit into 
the airbrush. And we are going to try going over our Terminator. This poor guy seeing all of the um, the enamel washes at the moment. So it's gone finally. And we're just going to blast him and see if it flows out all right. So, as you can see, it's going through the airbrush a lot better now. Um, it's still a little bit tight coming out of the airbrush. Again, maybe a more thorough clean might have helped, or a bigger nozzle size. I am tempted to change over to the 0 0.5 millimeter, millimeter nozzle to see how that affects uh, the enamels coming through the airbrush. But definitely a much better result where, in the review, I was kind of having to feather the action, tr uh, feather the trigger just to get the uh, paint to come out now it's coming out smoothly if not in not a huge quantity i'm still running it at 50 psi uh, so it is still absolutely forcing out this uh, enamel wash but again it's given me a nice even coat um, it's still the the wash is actually still kind of liquidy enough it's still uh oh what's the word it's still got enough flow to it that it has flowed into the recesses some as well uh, so once it's all dry and i go over it with the uh uh, white spirits that there's already a natural pooling in the recesses uh, so that will just kind of exemplify the effect but yeah just a quick video uh, once again thank you very much for uh, kind of the responses to the review video uh, I'm really really pleased how it went a um, couple of things that I, I've kind of had suggested my way so I might revisit these washes as well um, I am going to be using them as a daily driver in my projects also, as I said, but there are more experiments to come in regards to playing with enamel washes. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. Have a wonderful day and bye bye for now.